This week on One Devotion. See the EuroLeague champs lift another trophy far from home. Go backstage at one of the EuroLeague's emblematic clubs. Follow this century's most crowned team through China. And ride along for a superstar's unique arrival to his new club. EuroLeague teams across the continent have spent the last few weeks getting ready for the start of the new season. To make sure they are fighting fit when the ball goes up in the air for week one of the regular season. Lots of clubs have spent time away from their home cities, including Olympiakos Piraeus, who were able to enjoy some fresh air outside while being put through their paces at a training camp. The opening days of pre-season practice are the least popular time of year for many players because a lot of fitness sessions don't even allow them to touch a basketball. The start of practice is also time for players and coaches to become reacquainted after their summer holidays before coaches begin the serious business of talking to their players about the season ahead. Another important job in the summer months is welcoming new signings. Some of them are already familiar faces, such as Ian Fujukas at Jalgiris Kaunas. I think for me it's a big motivation to come back and play uh, at the highest level in the EuroLeague. And uh, the team is going to be a good team, I think, so it will be a good uh, year, I believe. Others, such as EuroLeague debutants Brock Motum and Olivier Hanlon at Jalgiris, have a first chance to develop on-court chemistry with their new teammates during practice games. It was good, you know, I got here I think two days ago, so just kind of getting used to, you know, the plays and, you know, the style of play with this team. Pre-season also provides an opportunity to perform off-the-court duties, with Maccabi Fox Tel Aviv players having fun as they strike a pose for their annual team calendar photo shoot. And of course, there are chances for players to meet fans, with EA7 Emporio Armani Milan being greeted by hundreds of supporters as they came together to welcome the new season. In Germany, a few lucky Bayern Munich fans even had the chance to play an exhibition game inside the Audi Dome against the team's players. Another event organized for Bayern fans was the official launch of the new team uniform, which concluded with players posing for photos and signing autographs. But although there are lighter moments, pre-season is really all about hard work, with players at Limoges among those getting themselves up to full speed as the new EuroLeague season draws ever closer. For its third consecutive Turkish Airlines EuroLeague campaign, Savena Zvezda Telecom Belgrade decided to go big, both literally and figuratively, by signing former EuroLeague champion Sofoklis Skorzenitis. And when it was time for Big Sofo to land in the Serbian capital, the club and its passionate fans planned a surprise welcome. Skorzenitis was first greeted at the airport by Zvezda's general manager and press officer, expecting to go directly to the team facilities. That's when Sofo was given a piece of bad news. They explained to me that there was a, a problem with the car, so uh, we had to take a bus so we can go to an outside location to acquire another car. Uh, at the time, I would say it sounds normal, no problems. Um, I didn't know if it was a public bus or a shuttle. It was uh, no issue for me. So Foklis did not mind getting on a rusty old public bus that would take him to another car, or so he thought. Actually, I've been in worse, I've been in worse buses. I mean, uh, 
I didn't really mind uh, at the time. I mean, uh, I don't know, because maybe because of the flight, maybe because I was really tired. I mean, I didn't really think about it. They told me we we're gonna go to get another car, so I thought it was like only for a while, so there's no problem. Even though Sofa was not initially troubled by the change of plans, as the bus ride continued, the big guy did start wondering about what was happening. Well, actually, I was uh, thinking about it. I mean, I was looking outside and I feel like the airport can't be that big. I was like, it's a little bit weird. But soon enough, the big surprise was revealed. After a while, uh, music started coming out. That's music uh, that I heard before. I was curious. I was like, I heard this before. And suddenly, all the fans in the bus, uh, they took out uh, the jackets. They had like uh, red star uh, jerseys underneath, and they started singing, which uh, was uh, pretty amazing. <laughs> The local media had been closely covering Scott Sanitis' arrival, so Zvezda's little prank soon hit the news cycle. Before long, a team-produced video depicting the episode went viral on the internet. At the first time, like, when uh, I started coming out, uh, what actually happened, I mean, the first uh, piece of, uh, of news was that, that they picked me up with a bus, so nobody exactly knew what happened in the bus. My wife, she knows that I don't really care about this kind of thing, so she's like, she didn't say anything. Then the whole video came out, and uh, a lot of people called me, so like, yeah, that was great, that was amazing. So like, yeah, it was pretty nice. Uh, I was really surprised. Sofo says he truly appreciated the effort by his new club to making this happen. People that work in the club, you know, they really enjoy their uh, what they're doing. Uh, they really love uh, the team. They willing to go the extra mile to to achieve uh, uh, what the, the goals. I mean, this is what it looked at me. I mean, uh, the people, of course, uh, they love the club, and uh, I saw I saw that uh, in the way they greeted me, and uh, I was really happy. Usually, whatever I play, I have a great connection with the, the, with the fans. And um, that only uh, motivated me for uh, the upcoming season. This unusual welcome turned out even better than the team could have expected. But such a warm welcome also sets high expectations for team and player alike. It feels good, but also gives you a, a kind of... A, it puts you kind of on the spot, gives you a little bit of pressure. Uh, it, means me, it means a lot of people are expecting a lot from you, so uh, um, you got to work extra hard to not uh, uh, disappoint them. you got to try to meet the expectations. I mean, I understand uh, the team had a great season last year, so I understand uh, they were really, really excited, and uh, they were expecting a lot from this season also. Thanks in large part to a ton of Turkish Airlines EuroLeague and EuroCup stars, Eurobasket 2015 offered fans one of the greatest additions in the long history of that tournament. Including five current EuroLeague champions from Real Madrid reaching the title game, no fewer than 133 players from both EuroLeague basketball competitions gave their very best for their national teams. When the dust settled, Spain outgunned Lithuania for the trophy after having dethroned France this year's host in an overtime semi-finals thriller. Tournament MVP Pau Gasol dominated the medaled rounds and led Eurobasket with 25 points per game. He was joined on the all-tournament team by his Spanish teammate Sergio Rodriguez and Jonas Machulis of Lithuania, both from Real Madrid and by Nando Decolo of France and Cesca Moscow. There was plenty of gold and silver to go around for EuroLeague players, 
Madrid heroes Rudy Fernandez, Sergio Yul, and Felipe Reyes also added to their medals collections, as did Victor Claver of Lokomotiv Kuban Krasnodar, while Pau Ribas of FC Barcelona Lassa and Real Madrid newcomer Willy Hernan Gomez started their own. Five Jalgiris Kaunas players, Paulius Jankunas, Roberto Siavtokas, Mantas Kalnietis, Lucas Lekavicis, and Rinaldas Sebutis took home silver, as did Bindaugas Kuzminskas of Unicaja Malaga. Among other great performers, Fenerbahce Istanbul and Czech Republic forward Jan Vezeli posted a tournament best five double doubles. By reaching the finals, both Spain and Lithuania guaranteed themselves a spot at next summer's Olympic Games in Rio de Janeiro. So expect to see most of these EuroLeague stars shining brightly again for their countries very soon. A traditional and popular part of the Turkish Airlines EuroLeague preseason build-up is Media Day where players and coaches from each team make themselves available for photographs and interviews, looking ahead to the rapidly approaching campaign. Among this year's first teams to hold their media days were Bayern Munich and Dinamo Banco di Sardegna Sassari, whose players were happy to take the opportunity to engage with fans by participating in a wide range of fun activities. Many players jumped into the video interview room to cover a wide range of topics, including on-court matters about their hopes and ambitions for the coming season, along with their reflections on the key past experiences which have shaped their lives and careers. But there were also lots of laughs as players opened up about themselves and their teammates, with plenty of room for their traditional locker room teasing and joking. Some players even oblige with requests to show off their singing voices. Oh, mia bella matinina, che te brille de lontan, che te brille de lontan, tu t'adore piscinina, tu t'adore piscinita, tu te domine Milan, tu te domine Milan. In addition to plenty of basketball talk, Players were also able to enjoy the lighter side of life and give a glimpse of their personalities off the court, their hobbies and their family lives, allowing fans to connect with them as people as well as players. The biggest to-do list belonged to the photographers, who were tasked with taking literally hundreds of team and individual photos for use on the EuroLeague website and by the general global media over the next few months. Some of the photos called for serious poses, others less so. And when it was all over, teams could return to their main business on the court, safe in the knowledge that fans all over the world will enjoy hearing their personal stories about basketball and life in general over the course of the season. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Reigning EuroLeague champions Real Madrid started the new season in the same way they ended the last, by winning another trophy with a resounding triumph at the Intercontinental Cup in Brazil. Los Blancos made the long journey to Sao Paulo to compete over two games against host team Bauru, which won the Liga de las Americas Championship earlier this year. The opener was a closely contested, high-scoring and entertaining contest which saw the Spanish team establish a seven-point half-time advantage after newcomer Trey Tompkins made a strong early impression for his new club. Madrid continued to dominate immediately after the interval, moving into a 17-point lead behind Sergio Yul and JC Carroll. But Bauru then launched a spectacular comeback, hitting five consecutive three-pointers as former Madrid big man Rafael Hetzheimer played a leading role. The drama continued in the fourth quarter, which saw the home team eventually claim a one-point victory with a layup from Ricardo Fischer with just 4.4 seconds left on the clock. That meant Madrid had to win the second game by two points or more. Another strong start from Carroll and Yule established an early lead. 
Bauru fought back behind Leonardo Lindel, but Madrid nonetheless moved ahead nine points at half-time. The home team continued to battle, but Tompkins again came to the fore as Madrid maintained its advantage heading into the final quarter. Yule helped to ensure there would be no comeback this time from Bauru, as Pablo Lazao's team ran out winners 91-79 to secure an 11-point aggregate victory. Yule was named MVP after registering 38 points, 12 assists and 9 rebounds over the two games. And Felipe Reyes lifted the trophy as Madrid claimed its fifth Intercontinental Cup triumph. Hi Turkish Airlines EuroLeague fans and welcome to Who Said Newcomer? Today we're in Milan with Krunislav Simon and Jamel McLean. Let's play! First question. Let's see what you know about your new city. Tell us a well-known monument of Milan. Yeah, but explain question. <laughs> Nothing to explain. A famous building in Milan. Oh, the cathedral. What? Ah, yes. Domo, Domo, Domo. Ah, Pia, ah, yeah. Domo, Domo. Yeah. Number two, do you know the population of Milan? Two million, 1.8. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us a typical dish of Italy. Pa pasta. What? It's yeah. not enough? Or pizza? Yeah, that's enough. Give, give me one point. <laughs> <laughs> Say something in Italian. Ciao. <laughs> Next question, who is your team captain? Ch Chirella. No. Uh, Gentili. Yeah, I was not on the camp. <laughs> <laughs> Number six, which teammate has spent the most years here? Gentile. Uh -huh. Do you know the name of your club president? Yeah. <laughs> Pro Proli. Yes. Tell us the colours of your team logo. Red and white. Four, four. I'll, I'll let you uh, come back. Uh, for sure. No, uh, I'll let you come back. You so think too slow, man. No. It's <laughs> not that you'll let me. Okay. <laughs> now I win. Easy. Okay, let's see. To decide the winner, when was your team founded? Oh. 1936. I saw that hat. <laughs> but really <is> smart. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Congratulations, Krunislav. As a prize, you can keep the cap that gave you the correct okay. answer. Oh, uh, you see. One of the most emblematic clubs in the Turkish Airlines EuroLeague, Shalgiris Kaunas is also among its most unique. As the signature team in a country where basketball is king, Shalgiris not only fills the spectacular arena that its team calls home, but also manages it for concerts and other sporting events. Hello, my name is Paulus Motiyunas. I'm the president of Shalgiris Kaunas team and welcome to our office. Behind the scenes, there are always reminders of the club's prestigious history, highlighted by the trophy that honoured Salgiris as the last EuroLeague champion of the 20th century. This is the biggest trophies that we had, the Continental Cup and, and these trophies, you know, this is what, what builds the history. After moving to the state-of-the-art Salgiris Arena in 2011, the club took on the dual challenge of building a highly competitive EuroLeague team and managing the largest indoor arena in the Baltics. Mostly at this office, like I said, we have both the arena management and the, and the club management. So yes, it's divided into the, the sectors that they're responsible for. And of course, you know, it's everyday job, not only for the, for the games, but we have Kalimino coming, 
We have Bocelli coming and all other superstars and of course the arena is mostly busy because before Christmas and New Year's. So the, the start of the EuroLeague is the start of the, of the arena season as well. Among Jalgirio Arena's nearly 16,000 seats for basketball are its VIP areas, including the game day vantage point for basketball legend Arvidas Sabonis. So as you can see, we like the green color and he likes the green color. We can see his jersey while he was playing in Jalgiris, a copy. And this is, this is the place where a lot of tension and emotions happen for every EuroLeague game that we have. Jalgiris fans are famous for their loyal and vocal support for the team. For EuroLeague games especially, they create a supercharged atmosphere for great basketball. It's something that we miss during summer. This is, you know, once, once you hear the EuroLeague anthem, the feeling gets back and it's, it's really emotional. And yes, this is something that everyone has to experience. Everyone that loves basketball has to experience. To be here, to feel the crowd and then to feel the emotions, it's something amazing. So you have seen our offices, now it's time to see the office of the players and welcome to our locker room. Everything, everything is here. This is the place where the players can get dressed, but everything happens in the same space. We have uh, the doctor's room, we have the coach's room, we have the weight room and we have a small, small gym for players to practice. Once inside the locker room, new players and unwary visitors must be careful not to run afoul, an old club tradition. Uh, the story came from even the old gym that we had. If you step on the, on the logo, if you step on it on, with your foot, you have to do push-ups or pay money. That goes to the team budget and for the players' budget. So be, be careful. No matter what is happening at the arena, Jalgiris players always have access to a high-quality practice gym. We mostly practice here, even if there's a concert, something happening in a big arena. The players have permission to come to the, to the court 24 hours a day. As you can see, the Dr. Dish machine also helps them practice and, you know, they have, each of them has their cards. They can come and do here whatever they want. Now let's see the main court. And here is where we want to see all our opponents, scared of the fans and scared of the team. Set on an island in the Namunas River, the new arena is the jewel of Kaunas as it looks to a bright future together with its signature team, Chalgiris. It's a big change when you come inside and you watch the games and you, you forget that you are here in Kaunas. And when you, when you go outside then you realize the reality that you, you are at home and this is really a a highest quality arena and it changed the life of, of the city completely. So this is the tour of uh, Jalgiris office, Jalgiris arena. Hope you liked it and we hope to see you soon here, but don't expect that we will give any wins without a fight. See you in this upcoming EuroLeague season. Growing tradition of Europe's greatest basketball clubs playing exhibition games in Asia continued this week when the most successful Turkish Airlines EuroLeague club this century, Panathinaikos Athens, visited the Chinese cities of Hangzhou and Macau. The EuroLeague Basketball Asia Tour marked the second time in three years that Panathinaikos players, coaches and staff embraced the role of European basketball ambassadors to build bridges between cultures. The Greens return to China to deepen the EuroLeague's long-term relationship there by bringing basketball excitement to the world's most populated continent, but also by engaging with Asian basketball fans both on and off the court. A traditionally warm welcome from the hosts started with a reception dinner, which was also a chance for two clubs, Panathinaikos and Zhejiang Lions, to strengthen ties and exchange gifts in front of local and EuroLeague basketball dignitaries. EuroLeague stars took center stage in the opening game of the tour at the Hangzhou Stadium, where Panathinaikos took control early and cruised to a 64-83 win over the Lions behind the efforts of a trio of newcomers, Sasha Pavlovich, Miroslav Radulica and Onyen Kuzmich, who 
split their 36 points almost evenly. Also in double digits for the Greens were Vladimir Jankovic with 11 and veteran Antonis Fotsis with 10 points. In each of the cities that hosted the games, Panathinaikos stars took chance to promote positive values from the sport of basketball by taking part in one-team sessions. It marked the third year in a row that Euroleague Basketball's corporate social responsibility program, One Team, touched down in Asia, organizing activities with local schools to benefit children. Head coach Sasa Djordjevic and as many as seven different Panathinaikos players participated in exercises that teach the youngsters values like teamwork and trust. On the last day of the China visit, Europe's basketball style was on display in Macau, where Panathinaikos defeated Guangdong Tigers 63-85. Radulica with 15 points and Pavlovic with 13 points were once again the top scorers. Vasilis Karalampopoulos chipped in with 11 in as many minutes, while James Feldin and Vladimir Jankovic each added 10. That victory put a wrap on this season's Euroleague Basketball Asia Tour, with a good time enjoyed and important basketball values exchanged between Panathinaikos and its gracious hosts. See you next week on One Devotion.